What's up, YouTube? Today we're gonna be piggybacking off of last week's tongue blocking lip pursing tutorial. We're gonna be talking just about tongue block splits, meaning playing two notes at the same time by using your tongue in the middle. Let's take a listen. Stuff like this. Welcome back. Like I said earlier, today we're gonna to be talking about tongue block splits. Right away you might notice that I didn't say tongue block octave, splits. And that's because the split doesn't always form an octave. It usually does, but there's different types of splits that do different things. Certain places where an octave really can't be achieved. So you might be wondering, what is a tongue block split and how do I do it? Or do I even need to? On my last video I made concerning tongue blocking and lip pursing, I really just covered both examples and what they do and what they're good at and what they're not so good at each. And I noticed that maybe a couple people commented that probably didn't watch the video and said stuff like, well, Paul Butterfield didn't tongue block. Well, I mean, he did. He didn't tongue block single notes, but he tongue blocked octaves. That's what I was doing in the beginning of the video. Stuff like this. So I kind of covered that in the last video, but I didn't really tell you how to do it. Let's talk about that today. A good way to start a tongue block split is to put your mouth over the first four holes, all of those right there, and blow the whole chord. Then I want to put my tongue on the two holes in the middle. When I was first starting out, I had a very hard time with this. I think I was trying to put my tongue too small. I didn't realize that there was a lot more room and a lot more forgiveness than I thought. I went out one night to a little club in Maine called Morganfields, and there was a great local Maine harmonica player playing named D.W. Gill. And I was really struggling with the technique. I, I really couldn't get it. I would play, I would try to get this, but it would come out like this. Or like this. Just couldn't get that pure, that one blow and four blow. Couldn't get them together like that. And he said, listen, just take a mouthful of harp, blow, and then add your tongue. And I was able to get it. One thing he didn't tell me that I learned later was if you just kind of curl the front of your tongue down, like, like that, like the flat part of the top of your tongue, that seems to be able to help getting them a little easier. Once you get the first one and four split, which is an octave, one and four blow are the same note. In this case, it's a C. Once you get that, what you want to do is just leave 
your tongue on the harmonica. Don't change a thing and then just inhale. That way you automatically have two. Now I remember when I was first learning this, when I would inhale, I would automatically make my mouth a little smaller and this would happen. There's the blow. Now then I would inhale and I would suck it in and I would mess up the octave and it would sound like this. Right, so you gotta leave your tongue in exactly, and your mouth in exactly the same position. It's also helpful, especially in the beginning, to really think that I had to have much more of my mouth on the harmonica than I thought was necessary. I didn't think that I needed to put that much on there, but I did. So once you can get the blow and the draw, you just want to move them around. So I can try going from one and four, and then slide up and then be playing two blow and five blow. And then slide up and be playing three blow and six blow. Now the cool thing about the blows is you can play them all the way up with just a two hole split in the middle. So you can hear that's a very different sound than the single note. Now the draw splits, on the other hand, are a little bit trickier. You're okay on the first two. And what I mean by the first two is one and four draw and two and five draw. But even two and five comes with some problems. But let's talk about one and four. One draw on this harmonica here on a C harp is a D and four draw is a D. The holes are they're split by two in the middle. holes one, two, three, and four, and then put my tongue on the middle. And I get a perfect octave. And you can hear that I can like to slap and take my tongue on and off. Some guys will wag their tongue back and forth like a dog and they'll and they can get like a trill going like Dennis Grinling's really good at it. Mark Hummel and Kim Wilson are good. I, I'm terrible at that. I, I think it's genetic. I tried every day for 15 minutes for a year and a half and then I finally started doing something else for that 15 minutes. <laughs> now when you move to the next one, two and five. You can hear that doesn't sound like the other ones. Because it's not a pure octave. It's one of the reasons we call them splits and not octaves because they're not always octaves. So what we get there is the root and the seven. So even though that's not an octave, that's a very cool combination of notes, especially if you're a blues player because you're getting the root of the one chord, G, and you're getting the seven, which is the same note as the two draw double band. So that's a very hip combination of notes. There's that tongue on and off thing. Butterfield did that all the time. And so did Junior Wells, and I mean, pretty much every blues lip purser that ever lived still played tongue block octaves. You know, you, you wanna learn them. You can't get a pure octave 
out of this. Unless you were to bend two draw out of the left side of your mouth all the way down to two draw double bend, and then you would have an octave of five draw. Believe it or not, I actually use that sometimes. More as an effect, I'll go. It's pretty cool. Chris McCulloch taught me that. And there's a similar problem happens on six draw. You really don't get a cool combination of notes you would get the major third and um, and the two. So that's not quite as cool as the two draw and the five draw. Of course, you could bend the three down. It's not very useful. What I do when I get to that note, if I'm tongue blocking, I will slap it a chord and then leave just the six or not slap it. When we get to the three draw and the seven draw, right? octaves going above the three draw in the seven draw or the major third of one. I now need to do what's called a triple hole split. I didn't know about this. I had heard George from Monica Smith and I had heard Rod Piazza and some of these guys sounding like they were playing a chromatic but they, I knew they were playing a diatonic because I could hear them bending on the bottom. The guy that really got my attention the most was Bill Clark, William Clark. When I heard Butterfield, when he went up to seven draw, he didn't really play the triple splits. He plays something like. Like that. But when William Clark went up there, he sounded like this. And then further up, I was like, holy Christmas, what is that? And I didn't know they were triple hole splitting until much later. That's what's Bingo, up. you didn't know that. From holes seven draw, eight draw, nine draw, and 10 draw, you need to block three holes of the harmonica just on the inhale to get the pure octave. Now you hear that little beating sound? That's the harmonica slightly out of tune. Now it kind of sounds cool and sometimes I, you know, will not tune my harmonicas perfectly because I actually kind of like the sound of it. But if you don't like it, you just have to be really good with the jeweler's file. The hardest thing about the triple hole splits is switching back down to the double hole splits for all the blows. When you heard me going 
I'm actually going double hole, triple hole, move down, triple hole, move back up. So that was tough for me to learn in the beginning. But I actually kind of like the switch a little bit because it creates this kind of chordal sound. You can do those triple hole splits and those double hole splits, but you gotta go down to the double when you do the blow notes and then up to the triple. First one you'll be doing is the three seven split. Then you'll be trying the four and the eight together. And then you'll be trying the five draw and the nine draw together. And then the six draw and the 10 draw together. The three and the seven. The four and the eight. The five and the nine. And the six draw on the ten. Those are double hole and triple hole splits. Now there is a single hole split. It's very hard, at least for me, to do on the diatonic. On the chromatic, it's a little bit easier. We hear little Walter and also Alan Wilson on his song Parthenogenesis, probably mispronouncing that, and it gives you fifths. So I'm playing, putting my mouth over three holes and then just blocking the one in the middle. Now, a lot of guys, Irish guys like James Conway and also players that just specialize in playing lots of different kinds of music like Winslow Yerksa, a lot of those guys have no problem with single hole splits. I've struggled with them over the years on diatonic. I have used them. I used them on one song, um, Dirty Memory, and on uh, Approved by Snakes, uh, a song called Demon Lover. And I played it on a low D harp. and. I got a couple of single hole splits in there. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. And that's double hole and triple hole splits. If you need to learn single hole splits, talk to Winslow. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you. Bye -bye. Well, if you made it to the shout outs, you're one of the very few, according to my YouTube algorithms, who sat through the entire video. So congratulations and thank you very much. This is a tremendously important part of the video because here's where I get to thank and shout out to everybody who made this possible. First of all, everybody that subscribes to this YouTube channel, you're doing a tremendous part to keep this going. Second, Patreon. Patreon makes it all possible. I'm booked up all week with lessons, but I'm able to teach less and make more free YouTube videos because of the contributions that you guys are making on Patreon. Thank you, Patreon patrons. You're keeping these videos free for everybody that can't afford a dollar a month, two dollars, five dollars, a hundred dollars, whatever you can donate. I appreciate it so much. I promise you, every single Friday as usual, there will be a free YouTube harmonica lesson. No matter what. But you Patreon patrons are the ones that are making it possible. Also, when you come over to Patreon, you're gonna unlock all kinds of free videos, video diaries, all kinds of other stuff. I get very candid on Patreon. I tell it all where I can't say it here on YouTube. Big shout out to the Lone Wolf Blues Company, making my microphone, pedals, everything. Lone Wolf, man, since 2010, I've been working with the Lone Wolf Blues Company right here out of Ponchatoula, Louisiana. Thanks to Blue Moon Harmonicas, Tom Halchek, making my combs, my covers, tuning up my harps. He'll customize your harmonicas for you. I use Honer Harmonicas. 
Before they even get to Tom, I get my Honer harmonicas. Right out of Germany, the very best. Make music with Honer. Thank you to Harp Gear Amplifiers. Thanks to Tom Halchek, I'm getting a second Harp Gear. I'm gonna be louder than ever. I'm talking about eight tens and 100 watts coming at you at festivals this year, which you can find on my website www.mooncat.org. It's got all the bios, my information, all the stuff I've done. Everything is on www.mooncat.org. Tour dates, you name it, all there. Thank you, everybody that subscribes. Thank you, Patreon patrons. Thank you, Honer. Thank you, Blue Moon. Thank you, Lone Wolf. Thank you, Harp Gear. And thank you. See you next time.